keys out of the, out of uh, out of this query, and then I get the list of parent keys from the from those children, and then I can simply do a bulk fetch to actually get those parent entities, and I basically and I basically accomplished the uh, the problem here. So this has also really gained, gained us huge results in sort of querying. Now, you know, when we query our following table, it's very, very fast. We don't have to, we don't have to worry about the data store serializing this unnecessary list. And we're using this crazy trick here to actually get all the entities. <coughs> so before I, before I end the talk, you know, I have, I, you know, I've talked about a couple of probably, I would say, boring topics. But you know what? We're on the Google app engine. You know, why don't we have a search? You know, all web applications nowadays have some form of search. In Facebook, you know, many of you search for your friends. And we need to actually incorporate, we want to incorporate that as well. <coughs> but you know what? In Google's big table, they never told us how. <laughs> and the problem is, is that, you know, we need to find, you know, we still need that feature. So Google actually did release a very basic implementation of this. And what I'm going to talk about to you is very much inspired by that. Uh, but this implementation was limited to Python. And you can find more info here at this link. Um, but, you know, don't look at this as a permanent solution. Google will have full text search at some point. Uh, but we can apply some of our earlier lessons here. Um, in a sense, it basically is a search index by entity. Right. So, so you can think of this, say I have my messages entity and I want to have a search on my messages. I can actually create a search index in that entity using this searchable model. And that API will give me back all the keys for that particular entity? Yeah, in a certain sense. However, there is no implementation of this in Java. <laughs> so one of the things that we need to do is we need to build it. So how does a full text search index work? I mean, how does Google search, you know, crawl the web and, and create, you know, it allows me to index individual text entities in there. We already know how they do relevancy, but how do they actually get the actual text? Well, how does, well, basically it's very simple. You break up the text using lexicographical analysis. This is basically a fancy word, basically saying language analysis, natural language processing, how is a sentence structured, things like that. And all these, basically a bunch of you know, very academic stuff that gets you basically a list of terms that you can search on. Then you need to store these terms in a lookup table, you know, based on the keys of the message. Now, with list fields, we can do this. And we can also build queries using the same uh, uh, tricks in search. And we can also even you know, optimize this by using child entities and keys only queries that I just talked about before to optimize for the serialization. So I've deployed a live example. Um, I don't know if any of you can read that, but if any of you have internet access here, feel free to go to searchguestbook.appspot.com. Uh, basically, this is a modified version of the guestbook uh, sample application that comes with the Java SDK. But I've added, some, I've added a search feature to it. And if you want to sign it now, go ahead. Can everyone see my guest book? So you can sign in here using your Google account.
Okay. Uh, my account, <laughs> change, sign in as different user. If you want, you can sign in as YouTube. In any case, um, you know, basically here you can sign it. Um, I can sign it, you know, very simply. Okay. And uh, say I want to search this thing. Pretty fast, isn't it? Okay. So, I mean, if anyone wants to play around, you can continue. But basically, basically, um, Basically, we actually implemented this very simply. We created a list field called search terms. And here's our lexicographical analysis. It's just a Java regular <laughs> expression. And uh, this can be optimized, of course, with something like Lucene. But this is really cool. You know, we've implemented search in a very you know, ad hoc way, but you know, we've gotten, now we can actually have searchable content on App Engine pretty much very quickly. Um, so this uses a cool feature of list properties and queries called merge join. Um, I'm not going to get too much into detail on this, but you can kind of think of this as organizing your data in, Venn di in a Venn diagram fashion and then finding the intersection of that data. So when you have multiple terms, you can, find, you can think of it as finding the uh, basically the list, uh, a set of all, the, uh, all that contain one term and a set that contain another, and then intersecting the two together to actually get your search results. Uh, you need to watch your indexes here, so the more complex you make it, the more indexes you'll have to create. We can also optimize this by using memcache to cache common search queries. And the code will be made available after the talk, so you can take a good look. So in conclusion, uh, so Google App Engine for Java is pretty much a standardized way to build apps on App Engine. Um, so pretty much you don't have many excuses for not trying it already. Um, in building Social Walk, we learned several lessons which I've told you today. And um, here's a link actually. If you go to searchguestbook.aspot.com and then look for searchguestbook.tar.gz, uh, you can get the code and actually play around for yourself. And you can get started by visiting the development website at code.google.com slash app engine. Okay. Yes. So, have, are, are you guys built on App Engine, and have you exceeded the free quotas? Uh, well, we actually haven't exceeded the free quotas just yet. Uh, we will probably shortly at some point. But uh, the free quotas are pretty generous. Um, and normally, you know, for a reasonably moderate uh, web application, um, they're pretty pretty much that's all you need. Uh, so, you can easily get started. So the question was, what about the one megabyte storage limit? Um, well, the one megabyte storage limit um, pretty much is pretty generous if you think about it. Um, it depends on what you're trying to store. Um, if you're trying to store files, um, anything like that, I, I would suggest that you actually use a, you know, probably a some a remote file system like Amazon S3. Uh, Google is actually planning a solution to this problem too to allow people to upload and store large files. So that's uh, one thing. But you can use the data. The data store's one meg limit is typically more than reasonable for most sort of data as long as it's not too large. It's normally pretty much okay. 